All right, everybody's looking for free energy and and electricity to be able to produce electricity for free or on the cheap. Well, I think it may be possible. And there's something called sonoluminescence, which means that in water, if you can cavitate water, which means explode something real quick and create a void inside the water so that that cavity is just empty. It's really nothing in there. There's no gases. There's nothing. So what happens is electrons, literally just raw electrons, fill that hole. And it has something to do with, with the hydrophilic and hydrophobic layers in the polar water. Now, I haven't quite figured that out, but there's something called easy water that creates a, a barrier that keeps electrons on one side. Anyway, I'm going to show you, I'm going to demonstrate it, then we got to figure out <laughs> how the damn thing works. All right, so let's, whoops, let's look into the explosion and I will explain it. There's going to be two regions here. One of them is more li brightly lit, so you're going to see this quite bright. And this we're going to see the core because it's less brightly lit. So we'll see deeper inside here. But it's the same reaction going on at the same time. Now this is a firecracker underneath water. When it explodes, it is going to just make a big hole like this. That's what happens. <laughs> but it's underwater. So what is the result of that? There will be some chemistry from this that will fill up these little particles, but then it will continue to shock wave out. And as it does, the chemistry's gone and it just floods with electrons. You'll see them glowing and flickering in these different colors. And then as it brings itself back in, all those electrons are sitting inside there. They have no place to go. They cannot go back into the water. This I have not figured out, but I think it's got something to do with the hydrophobic polarity of the internal core of that membrane now. It must be positive or must be negative, which pushes the negative electrons in. It compacts them inside because when it crushes, it crushes. So let's watch and see what happens. Now, hold on one second. Now, by the way, this is Gav and Dan, which are the slow-mo guys. Absolutely fabulous. We're five million hits on this. People like to watch this kind of stuff. I love it because I understand the physics of what they're doing here. You can't see this stuff by with the naked eye. You never, ever understand this. But it, it becomes almost undeniable once you see what is really happening. Slowly. <laughs> Okay, it's going to explode, and I'll just talk it through as it goes. All right, so initial flash, boom. Now, we're seeing it from the outside. This is way inside. Now, watch carefully. You're going to see the electrons. You see the little flashy little lights, the little tickly lights going off in there? Those are raw electrons. Those now have the... I'm going to stop it for a second. The the chemistry now is pretty much used up. We're way inside. There's almost no, there's no violence in here anymore because that's gone. Now, what is happening now? It's flooding into where the light is, is coming in. It's forcing electrons to flood into the vacancy, which is not populated by anything. The chemistry is, is gone. The power is gone, the cavity continues to expand, and now has to be filled with something, and it raw electrons from the sunlight, because this was been done outside, is cascading in there, flooding. Watch what happens, and then watch over here, and you will see this. These are the electrons. They will boil, literally boil, and you'll see that if you look carefully. You see, there's the electrons flooding in, these little lights, the red, blues, and greens. That is the color of light, red, blue, green. Now, look at, the, look at them. You see in here? That is boiling. This is literally boiling now. Right? You see these electrons? They have nowhere to go. They are now coming down and being crushed. You'll see this start to glow. Why would that start to glow? Well, it's collecting its electrons inside of itself. 
All right? That's the only possibility. Now watch it carefully. See it start to glow? It's collecting them now. These now, this boiling mass, is being forced into the center. This raw electron. You see, there's no other possibility. Absolutely none. It's not going to just turn itself on again. It is crushing what is inside, and what is inside is electrons. Now, how do we harvest that? I'll show you in a second, but watch what happens at the end here. Look at that glow. Look at that glow. No other possibility here. And when it goes off, it goes off with a vengeance. Pow! Now, what happened up above? See, now we're just catching the final. Up above, the water went up like a rocket ship. Alright, cool. right, cool. right, so this is, is very possible a way to get huge amounts of electricity just out of water. And I'm going to show you how I think we might be able to harvest it, and it's right here. All right. You got water. Instead of a firecracker, you've got a ball. And that ball has a cover over the top. I just put lines here to show you what it would look like. But it's almost like an eggshell over an egg. A half of an eggshell over an egg. So it's almost tight up against that egg. And if you went <laughs> up and down like that, you would have to create a cavity. There's no other possibility. If you pulled that up, the water would not have enough time to just sort of move in there freely. It would create a cavity. And then it would force itself to collapse again. And you would get some kind, you hopefully could collect some electricity. So here's the deal. I'm going to call this a resonator, which is obvious. It's going to, brrr, that's going to have to go at such a frequency, up and down, see a frequency, brrr, and like a spring to return it. I'm just showing that as, you know, somebody's definitely going to do this an engineer. You have to make that thing vibrate like hell. And it has to be fast enough that it's in a frequency that forces a cavitation. When you have that cavitation and that hole opening up over and over and over, you're going to have to suck the electricity out of there or it's going to be bang, 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 bang. All right? So, what do we do there? So, you got extreme rapid pulsation creates this cavitation. The frequency pulls open a tear in the water. <laughs> right? The tear fills with raw electrons. Now, when it collapses, it concentrates the electrons, just like we saw before. Woof! Now, what do you do with them then? You have to force them, instead of letting them explode, you have to send them out. Right? And then the return side is, is on the other side, uh, going back into the water, so it has a place to collect those electrons back. Somebody's going to have to figure this out better than me, but I'm seeing that, you know, you, perhaps some people have seen star in a jar, and they show a, a thing of water, and a guy has resonance frequencies, just frequencies, zzz, and they, they bang head on in the center, and when they do that, they create the cavitation, and, and it's on such an extreme pulsation that you don't know it's happening, you just see a light light up in the center, and the light is the you know, because it's just it's happening so fast, you can't tell. It's even like 60 cycle electricity. You can't even tell it's turning on and off. But it's actually on and off 60 times every second. You don't even know it. You know, the older light bulbs, not the newer ones, LEDs, they stay on continuous. But it's a different story. Anyway, piezoelectric heaters. I don't see any reason not to have that. Piezoelectricity is just a crystal that when you give it a little bit of electricity, it vibrates like hell. And you could figure some way of making that piezo crystal, even maybe working with a tuning fork or something to give you some extension out there between it. And it would cavitate in between itself or something. I don't know. But there's got to be some way to use this sonoluminescence and create sono photonism or whatever you want to call it. Sono photonics. But somehow we need to be able to harvest this is it seems to me like there's something there to be at least investigated all right so i guess that's all about as far as i can go with it